this isn't a staged video at all. <laughs> Not at all. So, um, I'll let you ladies introduce yourself. Um, I'm Susanna Chambers, I'm a project manager uh, in family learning and an education consultant. And I met these two fantastic people in the education sphere yesterday at the National Centre for Families Learning Conference uh, here in Fort Lauderdale by the ocean. <laughs> so I'll just hand you over ladies to introduce yourselves. Okay. Uh, I'm Juliana, I'm a PhD student at MIT and I, we, uh, I work with Annalie on designing coach family networks for children's early literacy learning. And my background is, I guess, is originally in engineering, and now I've uh, started working for the past couple years with families. And I'm Annalie. I'm also a PhD student at MIT uh, at the Media Lab in the Laboratory for Social Machines, which is a mouthful. And um, I'm also working on the Coach Family Child uh, Networks around literacy learning. And um, my background is in uh, education, psychology, neuroscience, with a focus on literacy learning. So we met yesterday by complete chance, didn't we? We ended up presenting the same session and I was like, thank you, thank you that I ended up with you because the more that you were presenting about the work you've been involved with, the more I was thinking, oh, that's, you know, I wish I'd thought of that when we started our RCT. Um, I never thought about that opportunity. So there was so much about what you were saying that really kind of raised my awareness about different ways of approaching it. Um, so, I mean, I suppose before sort of asking you in more detail about the RCT you, you've been involved with most recently, um, do you have any kind of top tips for people that maybe haven't been involved in RCTs before? You know, in terms of either demystifying them or particular <laughs> things to bear in mind that are important? Yeah. I think uh, the first one that comes off the top of my head is really um, kind of making sure to find out who those mentors may be. So that was a big uh, component for us as we had both been doing a lot of research um, but we hadn't actually been in charge of running our own RCT before and so while we may have been like undergraduate researchers in different kinds of RCTs we've never been part of the entire thing and um, there's a lot of planning that goes into it and a lot of things around like really trying to develop your research questions so that you can kind of from there know how you might want to look at it so you can keep the conditions constant and um, so getting to talk with different people in the field who you feel like are good mentors okay. who can kind of help you with um, battering around different yeah. research questions. That was something that was really useful for us because there is a lot of uncertainty. Um, and so, yeah, just being being open to, to working with people. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah, I would agree with that, with um, especially finding people from different fields that are all experienced in RCTs. So we did a lot of seeking out uh, not only quantitative social scientists, but people in specifically running interventions and literacy learning and seeing where those differences were in their methodologies. Uh, specifically, we, we kept hearing differences in just like sample size, right? If you're running something online versus you're running something in a classroom, those just look different in terms of sample size. Um, and so uh, trying to reconcile all that is really helpful to have all those different mentors from different fields who had experience running RCTs in their fields. That's really interesting. And um, I mean, obviously, I guess there will be people watching this mm -hmm. probably that will be in the same frame of mind as me sort of two years ago where I'd be looking at it thinking oh my god like RCTs that's so scary like even the acronym like <laughs> anything that's got an acronym straight away it's more scary <laughs> yes. isn't it to be fair um, and I think it'd be maybe really helpful to just share a bit about the kind of work you've been involved with. I mean, I know we don't have like the half an hour we had in the <laughs> workshop and stuff, but maybe I think it'd be really, really helpful to people that are newer to this work, you know, to know about the kind of work you've been involved with, you know, sort of what you've been looking at. Yeah, so we're uh, working on developing um, a network where a child will play with one of our um, early learning apps, which are very open-ended in scope. Um, and so, for example, the first one that we did with this RCT was called Speech Blocks. And um, it's kind of a letter to sound mapping uh, game where children can take uh, letter blocks and put them together and pull them apart in different That was so cool when you demoed that yesterday. Yeah, I thought it was amazing, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so it sounds it out as much as it can. And so there's no right or wrong, but they can really engage in different invented spellings. Uh -huh. And the purpose of it is to really understand not just the products of what children make, what words they make, but also the process of how. And so, um, so while they're playing with that, um, every tap and click is recorded. And then through that, 
um, through our different uh, customized tools, as well as then a, a coach, who we call a family learning coach, looks at that information, pulls out the most interesting or uh, meaningful learning moments, mm -hmm. uh, and then translates that to the parents in a very short contextualized update. Um, and then from there, uh, also suggests different uh, personalized activities that are related to things that their child's already doing. So okay. it's all very play-based. Um, and they can also reach back into the app and support the child in achieving their personal play goals by um, either helping them with words that they're struggling on spelling or um, giving different uh, ideas of different kinds of play that builds upon what the child's already showing interest in. So yeah. um, really the purpose of it is to kind of help families uh, engage in their child's play and know how to support that playful process of learning. Okay, um, I mean that's, that's such a, an important word isn't it and I've noticed that that is a word that luckily has cropped up quite a lot at this convention as mm -hmm. well um, but I don't think it's just in Europe that you don't hear the word as often although obviously there are countries in Europe where the concept of play of being playful is massively at the centre mm -hmm. of policy around working with families and, and early childhood yeah. um, but that idea of playfulness in learning you know I mean I think that that is massively missing from so much of the direction of travel and I suppose that's a, that's an interest to me the fact that you know you're obviously undertaking this RCT and actually that you know you at MIT are seeing that playfulness mm -hmm. is actually being a very valid um, element yeah. of that because I think you know not just with the families themselves that sometimes you know the value of play is underplayed yeah. um, but also that the practitioners themselves um, feel almost I think that if they emphasize that that it's not going to be taken seriously yeah. Um, and one of the things that really excites me about your RCT and how you describe that and you place that emphasis on playfulness and the use of tech as well, mm -hmm. the use of tech and combining that with play playfulness, I just think is fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So, um, I mean, in terms of next steps with the RCT, I mean, are there particular things kind of you've got in mind where you need to take that now? I think one thing that was interesting is that kind of at the crux of when we decided to do the RCT and the kind of relationship of our work um, was that it was now the third study that's been run on different parts and components of the system. So we did, um, you did, along with Yvonne, um, another PhD student in our lab, um, a pilot study with Northeastern specifically looking at the app. And then we did, about a year later, a pilot study of looking at the coaching system and really playing that role of the coach ourselves yeah. to figure out and how to define to de how to define that role. Yeah. Um, and building the tools first for ourselves and then moving into this RCT, building the tools for um, new coaches to train new coaches. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the reason we ran the RCT is that we were at this kind of crux um, inflection point in our research where we wanted to think about, okay, we can either, we have other apps that we build in our lab that we can start putting into this coaching system. Mm -hmm. But before we start putting the rest of them in, let's look at the efficacy of this coaching network. Right? Yeah. And so that was... Yeah. Uh, that kind of inflection point where the RCT made sense. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to run an RCT for RCT's sake. Um, and yeah, right. So the point of the RCT for our, ourselves was to really understand uh, is the efficacy of this idea of the coaching network. Um, can we sustain coaches? Can we sustain this engagement? And then if that comes out as something that you know is exciting and the results are there, then let's put the other apps in. Yeah, I mean, one, one thing I found interesting from your presentation yesterday as well, was slightly ironic, we talked about piloting and we've got planes flying. Yeah, right. <laughs> Have there been any planes here all day? And they just start flying over when we're having this conversation. Anyway, um, yeah, it, it was interesting in your presentation where you were talking about piloting, um, because I'm interested, how important as part of the process of you getting this RCT going, what importance would you place on that piloting stage? Very, very, a lot. Very yeah. important. Um, okay. I think, I think it's it's really important because, especially with our research, there's so many different components, right? It's a whole system, and so not only uh, as we, you know, the first pilot was really kind of understanding and developing the um, the app itself, Speechbox, but um, beyond that, it was when we got all that data, 
you know, it's just open open data. It, it open not in the sense of like anyone can see yeah, it. Yeah, just, of course. <laughs> but yeah. open in the sense <laughs> open of open-ended, um, open right? It's just children's play. It's just random words that they're making. And yeah. so um, we had to build an entire analytic system around that. And we couldn't do that unless we had that data. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so there's so many different components and so many different phases that all need to get kind of tested out before we can bring it all together to really understand, okay, what do we want to test? So the role of the coach um, is made up of so many different components. Um, and so we had to kind of use the piloting to test all those components. And I think additionally, one thing that actually, as you were talking, um, I wanted to make this distinction that I think is really important for RCTs is that while we're doing this RCT, we're also running an entirely formative study as well. And yeah. I think that's a really big tip when you're running RCTs is to think about which research questions are really a part of that RCT and have to have that comparison component and which ones are really just for us to help inform like the next iteration of this yeah. thing that we're doing yeah. or to inform our tools or our entire training program. Yeah. So in our talk, uh, we, we tried our best to split that up. Here are the RCT questions, here are yeah. the evaluative questions looking at the efficacy of the coach mm -hmm. and here are our formative questions in terms of what like what is the coach's role, what about our training program, you know we created this entirely new training program, how do we improve upon that, um, what is, what are the tools that we're building and the resources we make available for coaches and so there was so many rich things to be learned there that we didn't want to conflate by putting them into research questions that had to be evaluated. Because that's about improving our process, not right. about a, judging the efficacy of the system. Exactly. Yep. And we also talked yesterday, didn't we, which was really helpful for me as well about process evaluation yeah. and the fact that actually, you know, again, it really struck me that there can be so much learning between people involved in RCTs. And even if you've not been involved in an RCT before, you've still got something to bring to the table, haven't you, in terms of, like you said, you know, how do you capture those things in a formative way yeah. as you're going along even for internal purposes. So, um, one, can I yes. add one yeah, thing? Yeah, of course. Yeah, sure. Uh, as you're sharing, uh, like helpful tricks. Uh, one thing that uh, some of our colleagues brought up that we found incredibly helpful is uh, in the quantitative social sciences, they've started pre-registering mm -hmm. uh, questions for uh, RCTs. Interesting. Um, and we didn't really know about this practice, um, and I, we learned about it from from colleagues of ours, where basically you write out your, uh, you know, five hypotheses and how you're however many um, <laughs> and uh, you know and how you plan to evaluate them and you'll actually submit that before any data is collected to a third-party organization they have many of these um, pre-registration uh, uh, platforms, platforms. Mm -hmm. and uh, that's really helpful then one in forcing yourself to make an evaluation plan beforehand yeah um, and get everyone on board with that same evaluation plan because everyone has to sign off on it on the platform. yeah that's so important isn't it definitely but then on top of that, when you go then later to evaluate it, uh, funders, uh, you know, uh, uh, reviewers, whoever is looking at the results of these RCTs knows that you pre-register these questions before you saw the data. Um, That's so important. And also, I mean, you were, you were telling me on the way walking here as well about this thing that you've been reflecting on about partnerships mm -hmm. as well and yesterday we were talking weren't we just about like the logistics in terms of doing things at scale as yeah. well so like that that you've just described Juliana I can see that being extra important if you're taking it to scale because if you've got so many people involved it, it's not just the ethics is it? it's not just the ethics clearly that all needs addressing but also just the practicalities so time isn't wasted about misunderstandings and that type of thing so I'm massively excited by your RCT, massively excited. I'm going to follow it with great interest and I'm really looking forward to staying in touch. And um, yeah, and obviously sort of when I share the video with colleagues in Europe, um, I'll obviously let you know sort of any questions that come yeah, back as well. Do, and, yeah, please do. Yeah, and, and obviously as well, you know, if you've got any questions for us, you know, that might be helpful, then just let, let us know. Yeah, absolutely well. Okay. I'll see you later. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>